We're here in West Iceland and we're going to go and visit a creamery making traditional skyr. Now skyr is an Icelandic yoghurt cheese and it's so unusual that it's not even really a cheese. So let's go and find out how it's made. Sharing his skyr knowledge with me is Pogova Einar Gobjarsson. His creamery was first devoted to making ice cream but he later started to make skyr with the leftover milk as a fun way to preserve it. Why do we make skyr in Iceland? It's basically, it was to store the milk after you have taken the cream off to, to make it into butter. Butter was the currency and butter is only maybe 3% of the milk quantity. So you have a 97% skim milk left. That's a lot, you have to store it somehow. Preserving, making food, it's in my, my, my genes. My ancestors are farmers and it, it gives you really good fulfill at the end when you see the storage. I have enough for the winter. I can provide my family, my kids, myself with everything. I now make skir once a week all year round and more often in the summer. He starts the process by separating the milk from its cream and then pasteurising it. Pasteurization temperature is about 63 to 72 degrees Celsius, but we need the milk to be around 50 degrees when we separate it. Otherwise, it has an influence on the texture of the cream. If it's too low, for example, you will have less cream, and if it's too high, you will also have less cream as the fat molecules, they will sort of go on a big party in the heat. So they don't know what to do. The fat is a lighter in weight than the milk. So what happens in here is that we have a spinning rotator in there, centrifuge or separator, which goes very fast. And by spinning the milk like this, it will throw out the fat molecules. Right. They will go. And uh, the main source of the milk, which is water, will remain in there and go out the other way as skim milk yeah. into a tank. Uh, the cream we get out of the machine is about uh, 53 to 56% uh, cream. So it's a little bit heavier than normal cream you have in the, in the buckets today for your pudding or whatever. The cream we then take into the cellar and uh, store it until we make ice cream. This is usually one of the moments I enjoy myself in the creamery. It's because I like cream. Oh, right, it's like cream, <laughs> yeah. It looks very perfect coming out. Yeah. yeah. Smooth and nice. The whole process of making the skier, how long does it take? It takes about 24 to 30 hours. 30 hours? Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. Phase one. Done. Done. Yeah. The skim milk then cools down at 40 degrees for half an hour. I have here skier from last week, leftover, which I use as a starter uh, every time I make a new batch. So I will just pour it in here. And then we stir it. Now it will sit for maybe four, five, six hours. I will come here after four hours and have a look at the calculator. So as soon as the, the whey starts to come out of the product, it's ready to cool down and start the next process. And now we just have to wait until one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I'll see you then. It's because it's 23 hours of sunlight, you just don't sleep in the summer. Though. I avoid sleeping in the summertime as much as I can. I, I really enjoy, for example, at one o'clock last night, I went outside here with my cup of coffee. There was no wind, you could, there was not a sound from the birds as the birds had already f fallen asleep. So I was just sitting out there. You realize, you know, what life is supposed to be like supposed to be enjoying the nature.
After fermenting, the milk needs to be cooled down to 20 degrees to stop the fermentation. And then it's stirred for three or four hours to get a smoother texture. The following morning, the milk is poured in these linen bags, which allow the whey to slowly drain out. see it's already floating in that in the way. See it's draining out. The main thing we used the skier way for in the past was to preserve food. You boil the food and then you store it in the in the barrel this way. The, the consistence of the product at the moment is the same as yogurt. So you and the face making yogurt and skier is the same into this, into the take it out into the bags. And then it changes after that, it becomes something different. Yeah. The bacteria are different from the start. Because that's when it stops being yogurt and starts being sure. Yeah. It becomes a cheese. It's like a, it's like a, just a sack of jelly. Yeah. yeah. That is, I just kind of want to lay down in there. It's very satisfying. It's like a nice, really soft, wobbly pillow. Yeah. This is what I will really need next week, or when I produce skin next time. And now you can see the consistency of the of the milk. You know, you see how smooth it is. We want it to be like like silk. You can also see the small particles. Oh yeah, you can see them in there. It looks like, like a, you have poured sugar or salt over it. Mm. All this will be gone and the, those small items have joined together successfully into what we call skir. The skir in the bags can take 10 to 20 hours to fully drain out. A bag that previously weighed 20 kilos would now weigh just five. As you remember yesterday, when we put the, the coagulated milk in here, it was a full bag with smooth surface and you wanted to sleep on it. But now you don't want to sleep on it. <laughs> All the liquid is gone and this is the dry stuff we have remaining. Well, it's like a clay, yeah. It is. And this is exactly what we want it to look like. We want it to be flexible like this, you know. It, it, it's still smooth enough so it will float around. It's not gonna stay as a block. If I would have it sit for maybe four or five hours more in the bag, it might be more, more like a block. And then it would be more difficult to put it in the uh, packaging and you would also need to add more liquid to it when you mix it up for consuming. This is a final product. You can just take it as it is now and eat it. You can also add some to it if you want for flavoring. For example, if you have some, um, what's, your, what's your favorite taste in fruit? I like lemon, like a lemon sorbet kind of taste. Yeah, yeah. you could add lemons to it and then you would have lemon tasting skier. Nice. This is the final product, ready mm. for consuming. Nice. And I'm going to give you a little taste of it. Yeah, nice. I can, I can hear that you are hungry. <laughs> and this is a, a rhubarb syrup we make yeah. from our own harvest. And uh, even though skier is sour and rhubarb is sour, but when you make the syrup, you add some sugar to it. Mm. So with this, Together, it will be really tasteful. Mm -hmm. But before we add to it, you taste it. Good. Um. Mmm. Yeah. It's just, it actually tastes really yogurty. It's just a nice, thick, like creamy yogurt. Mm. But there is no cream in it. It's skin Yeah, milk. I know. 
just yeah. It's so funny. Thick, People always talk about yogurt. how creamy skin is, but it's there is no cream in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a little bit more. Mmm. No more spring fat. No, I'm, I'm gonna add this on top. So now. Mm. And now you're gonna have something really enjoyable. Mmm. That's great. That's really, really nice. Mm. That's super sweet. We have a saying. They're slatter skin or some egg. Okay, I'm not even going to try and attempt to say that. <laughs> it means literally um, those who have those who have the ability of doing something, they do it. For example, I can make skier, so mm -hmm. I do it. You know, and I do it literally, and I try to do it as good as I possibly can. 